anyway, so th there are these eight domains, so security and risk management, uh, quite a big domain. Asset security uh, is also a very interesting domain. Security architecture and engineering, this is, uh, I guess, uh, one of the most uh, more challenging uh, domain and one of the most bulkiest domain. I generally take about eight to nine hours to actually teach this domain. Uh, it, it has this cryptography concept as well, the encryption and everything else in this particular domain. Uh, domain four is uh, communications and network security, which is uh, uh, very, very similar to uh, C, uh, CCNA. So, if you're from that network networking background, and many of the, many of the people who do, uh, they will find this very easy. Uh, the CS, the, the particular uh, domain four, and uh, those who are not um, might find this a little technical. Understanding a lot of those technology words like you know the OSI layer and VPN, VLAN concepts, and everything else, but otherwise, it's uh, again a, a very interesting domain. Uh, identity and access management at domain five is something which is uh, uh, I would relate. I find it relatively easy. I think a lot of people find it easy to understand. Uh, there are some concepts here which are uh, which needs a little more time to understand, like uh, single sign-on, how it works, uh, federated identity. And, and so on. Otherwise, uh, the concepts of you know multi-factor authentication and biometrics and everything uh, is quite is not that easy, not very difficult to understand. Uh, security assessment and testing, which is uh, again a very interesting domain. It's not uh, one of the more. It's not. Uh, I don't find. I don't think this is the more difficult domain. It's one of the easiest domain. In fact, uh, you know, I, this is the uh, uh, domain which I've kind of. Uh, 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 teach very quickly as well. It doesn't take um, that much time to domain two and six. In fact, uh, just takes about one or two hours to complete. Uh, so uh, penetration testing concepts, uh, all of those things we discuss here. Uh, security operations domain seven is something which is uh, uh, a quite a bulky domain. There, are in fact, uh, uh, you know, three four different topics, uh, big big topics. Uh, which is part of this, uh, I would say, sections rather than topic. I would say sections part of the security operations. It's a bulky domain, but uh, uh, it's not very difficult. And uh, so we talk about concepts like uh, disaster recovery and physical security and uh, evidence collection and all of those stuff in this domain. And uh, domain eight is software development security. Again, uh, uh, a lot of people are a little afraid that you know I've never written any program. I'm I'm not, I'm not a programmer, right? So how will I you know, kind of understand this concept? And the good news is that uh, we're not. This domain is not about uh, programming as such. You know, you do not have to write any code. Uh, this is uh, I'm just trying to understand the best practices uh, and what are the security challenges with software development. Uh, so we just need to understand those concepts here, and uh, and, and and basic concept like you know, input validations, uh, you know, buffer overflow issues, which are very generic. We, we don't have to go into the coding level, uh, and the understanding you know what in the SDLC, what kind of security can be uh, placed where uh, in that uh, phases. So that that is what is uh, uh, discussed in this particular domain. Now let me uh, again uh, reiterate that uh, some of you might think, okay, you know, many of these things are very unfamiliar to me, and uh, and that is absolutely okay. So what, I, what what do I mean by that is that most people, even you know, you must must have had about you know maybe decades of experience. Uh, most people, even with the decades of experience, would have had experiences maybe just maybe one or two or two or three domains out of these eight. That, that's been my experience. That, that, I don't, I've never come across anybody who has uh, uh, worked across all the eight domains in their career. So I, you know, a lot of people, I've, I've seen a lot of people coming from the networking domain, uh, some from software development uh, domains, uh, identity access management, uh, so those are into risk management, who some, some are into testing, some are into security operations, and a mixture of those things. And 
And so what happens is that uh, the specific domains are their strongholds and they know, okay, they're familiar with networking. And so, so they are, uh, it, they find that easy, but, but then again, uh, somebody with networking security may find that domain easy, but may find the software development domain a little difficult uh, and vice versa. So, so my, my, what I'm trying to say here is if you feel that, okay, this is not something not familiar to me and uh, how will I do it? And the, the point here is that everybody, everybody is in the same, uh, same, same, same position. So it's, it's a matter of uh, whether, uh, which, which domain you're comfortable with. Uh, the, the person may be in a different domain, but uh, but actually it balances out. So what it means is that there will be some domain which is your turf, which you'll be familiar with, and some which you will not be. So uh, you'll have to balance your study. You have to you have to practice, you have to learn to study accordingly, according to those uh, you know uh, according to your strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so I, I hope uh, this is fine. Uh, if there are any questions, we, I can take up uh, later on. Uh, I don't want to get into the how to plan and uh, how to pass the exam. I'm going to go into uh, this is a uh, very popular saying. I hope you're able to see this. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, it says CISSP is a mile wide. And okay, so I don't know if you've heard this before. And this is important to understand. And uh, uh, and, and many people kind of uh, uh, fail because they don't understand what, it, what this particular sentence means here. So when I say CSS is a mile wide, it basically means that there is a, a lot of concepts to understand. There's a huge amount of concepts to understand and, 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 uh, and, and needed to prepare for that economy. And, uh, and, and when I say, uh, and, an inch inch deep that is good news which means yes there's a lot to study uh, but but it's not so much in detail okay so that's the good news but there's a whole lot to study and that's one of the reasons why actually people uh, find it the find this exam a little difficult because uh, because the uh, like I said earlier on there were ten domains and they reduced it to eight but they did not cut down the number of courses they just realigned the courses so it's it's still a lot of concepts to understand a lot of a lot of material to study and so it's still a, a fairly difficult exam in that manner okay this because there's so much to study different domains um and they just keep adding you know new materials every every uh, every time they refresh the course so that's the uh, thing about cs so a lot to study a lot to understand and many of those may not be in your comfort zone Maybe some of those you haven't studied before or experienced that before, but uh, it's an uh, good news again is that it's an inch deep because if it were in detail, then you probably would never complete that in your entire life. Uh, but having said that, uh, personally, I feel this is an excellent course. Yes, it's because it it covers the whole range of uh, security concepts that is uh, required uh, for exam for the exam. So uh, the next slide, I hope you're able to see this. It says how to fail uh, the exam. So I want to kind of touch upon this as well. Um, so, and, and over to my experience as a trainer for a while now, I, I come across people who fail the exam and, and unfor unfortunately, and uh, so, and I kept trying to understand what, what went wrong. Okay. And I want to quickly uh, share those with you. Uh, the first thing is, uh, cramming okay so this is a uh, one exam where cramming really doesn't help okay so it doesn't really help cramming so you need to understand from the uh, the concepts thoroughly okay uh, sorry may i request somebody's uh, i think uh, uh, on, somebody needs to be muted there's a lot of background noise Okay, so Smith, could you please uh, mute everyone else? Thank you. Hello, Smith, is it possible to mute everyone else? Yes, yes, it's muted. Yeah. It's muted. Yeah. Okay, thanks. 
Uh, so the first thing is about cramming. And, and I kind of, uh, uh, even when we're teaching a concept, so people try to uh, kind of cram their definition and understand and, and kind of uh, uh, kind of use that uh, knowledge. And, and that's not the, what the exam is all about. It's about application of those concepts. So cramming is not going to help you. Okay. Uh, another uh, problem I have is like, you know, people come to me and say, okay, you know, I had, you know, uh, I had kind of had this practice test, 5,000 questions. I did all those, you know, took five uh, exams and I still failed the exam. Again, and I, what I do is I ask a very simple question. Okay, tell me the difference between due care and due diligence or, or difference between least privilege and need to know or, or things like that, you know, basic concepts. And... And I know immediately, hey, there is something missing here. Okay, so unless you, like I said, unless you understand that uh, uh, th those basic concepts, you're not going to pass the exam. Not, not at all. Not, not, not a chance. So the question is, uh, should you not use those practice tests? And the answer is, you should definitely. You should use the practice test, but not to study. Okay, so do do not study from the practice test. So, so you should use those practice tests as a way to to verify your knowledge. Okay, so what you should do, and I'll talk about, it, is what you should do is 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 to uh, okay, so study, and I'll come back to that. So, okay, so do not study from the practice test. So there are a lot of, uh, and I'll tell you, there are a lot of exams, and I can tell you exams like Microsoft exams and Cisco exams and. And many of the exams where you can uh, even your, uh, you know, all those CEH and all the stuff, um, you can, uh, you, you get those uh, dumps, I suppose, right? All those dumps and, and you kind of mug it up and you pass the exam. Uh, you have zero knowledge, but you can still pass the exam when you, when you study from those practice tests. And certainly this is, uh, CSS is not that exam. That's, that's not going to help you. Okay, so I'll kind of talk about that a little later on more in the three day. Um, next, to study aimlessly without having any plan. Uh, that's another problem that I see. Um, you know, so th there are you know, eight domains. There are uh, even different sections inside those domains. Um, and if you do not have a proper study plan, uh, and, and because it's to begin with, it's overwhelming, right? It's, it's huge. You know, you'll see the fifteen hundred uh, pages books and all that you get. And, and that's just the beginning. There's just one book. So it's it start to getting overwhelming. So if you do not have a plan, uh, then, then, of course, then that could be a problem. So we, I'll talk about this uh, later on more in detail again. And the last uh, important one, why people fail the exam, and this is pretty sad, is because it's not they don't fail the exam, it's not because they don't know the answer. Okay, they don't, it's not that they don't know the answer. It's because they didn't understand the question. They didn't read the question carefully, and um, uh, there are certain keywords that you know uh, that's typically used in the exam. For example, what is the most important one, or what's the primary reason, or the least reason, or the you know so there are these specific small terms uh, that you need to be you need to pay attention to those, and. And uh, also, there are certain certain times, and unfortunately, this is what I hear from the participants, and even I have, uh, you know, in, even in my own experience, uh, is that uh, uh, you need to have a certain command over the English language. And unfortunately, there are some questions uh, which actually <laughs> is more to test your uh, English language rather than the concept, uh, the the technical, the, the security concept. So uh, you need to. And understand the question. There's sometimes there are big scenario questions, so you need to be able to read through each through the through the concept through that uh, question itself, and then and only then then you answer the question carefully. Okay, so um, so what also helps is that you know don't just uh, be in a hurry. There's there's a lot of time to answer the questions, and be careful about reading the question before you answer it. Okay, so then uh, I hope that's clear. So how to prepare for the exam? So, um, okay, so have a study plan. Okay, so as, as I was saying, have a study plan. Um, 
use the uh, so there are different domains you're gonna uh, target uh, how are you gonna do that so so a lot of people ask me again again I, I'm sure this is your your questions as well so how many uh, what should be the timeline you know you should you should take the exam and and my suggestion is that you should when you start studying it's like I, I want to really I want to really you know take the exam this is something which is in my uh, bucket list and I want to do it so my suggestion is have a at least a three months horizon okay uh, I would suggest anything more than that anything less than that fantastic go for it okay have it have a three months horizon and and the reason why I say a three months horizon is is because uh, uh, beyond three months is what happens is then you kind of you start forgetting so probably you suppose you studied domain one and on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the first week and by the end of three uh, by the end of three months you'd have probably forgotten domain one and you just come back and then revisit again so it's just going to be a cycle of uh, you know revisiting those domains again and again and again it's not never going to end so a study um, a plan of three months uh, is i think uh, a good one and a lot of people actually do this anything more than that i think you will just be wasting this the time to come back and study the same thing again and again and again it's then it will go on for years okay so three months plan uh, and it's it's not a you know uh, like a weekend study it has to be a daily study a couple of hours every day it's not going to be easy uh, but a couple of hours every day you know broken down into different uh, domains this, this is what i'm going to cover this is what i'm going to cover plan it out and uh, and, and that's the only way you're going to uh, you know pass and pass the exam but there has to be a lot of motivation a lot of uh, uh, i would say self discipline uh, to pass the exam okay now um, in, in my own experience my, my own uh, experience I, I passed the exam I, I, I took about uh, uh, how much how much time okay I took about uh, I studied for about three weeks and uh, and I passed the exam okay so it's I know it's a, uh, so and, and I, I wouldn't suggest that to everybody but I would say why I did that. Why why I was able to pass the exam was because uh, I, I mean, obviously I did have a lot of experience. But apart from that, I was already, uh, you know, I already had a lot of certifications in hand. For example, I had a CCNA, okay, which meant that domain four was something which was uh, I didn't have to kind of uh, spend a lot of time on that. I was ITIL certified, uh, so a lot of con those concepts are there in, in, in CSSP as well, risk management. And I was PMP certified, so risk management concepts, those are all there. Uh, then I was a CASP, CASP, that's from CompTIA. Uh, again, at least 60% of those materials are uh, are very similar to CSSP. So, and, and so on. So those, those kind of, uh, you know, having those certifications and those knowledge certainly expedited my own uh, on on uh, my own preparation but again it's again depends on your everybody has his own uh, you know experience and, and so on but do, uh, my suggestion again is have a three month study uh, plan um and uh, it and it, i think that's quite achievable if you can do it sooner fantastic uh next again as i was i think i've uh, touched upon this is understand the concept this is not a technical exam it's it's uh, so a lot of people come and say okay uh, you know what, uh, come and say okay, where, where, where is it uh, you know which technology and all stuff it's not it's we're not dealing with the technology it's, as i mentioned this is a vendor neutral conceptual exam and uh, and many of these uh, many of the people who actually take cssp are at least in a position to take decisions or influence decisions okay so what do i mean by that is uh, you mostly focused on the what and the why okay so you need to know what needs to be done and more importantly why that needs to be done and, and that's what the exam is all about what needs to be done and most importantly why needs to be done for example uh, what do we do to protect our network security well, the answer could be have a firewall or a 
UTM or uh, IDS and IPS. Uh, the question is uh, why uh, UTM and not an IDS or uh, you know or, or, or a DLP solution or whatever. So that why is something that you need to be able to answer. Okay, this is the reason why we have this solution here. But then, how do I install the firewall? Okay, so that how part is something which is not in the scope of this exam. Okay, so the how part is something which becomes starts becoming very vendor neutral, right? So, and and that actually changes very frequently, and that's not the scope of this particular exam. Okay, so understand this more of the why. It's a kind of uh, like I said, this is one of the more uh, uh, senior level exam so somebody who's kind of wanting to be in that position to to be able to take decisions as a, or, or influence decisions uh, wants to grow in the career be seen as the leader who has that knowledge this is that exam for this uh, for them okay uh, next is uh, use multiple study materials and uh, I'll talk about these things in a while. I think I'll kind of take about this. The, the, the thing is, yes, there are lots of books out there. Uh, which one to use? I'll talk about that. Uh, which uh, materials to use? So do not just depend on one single material. And, and there is no, no single, just one book that they will ask the questions from. They will ask the questions from various different uh, uh, scenarios and, 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 and reference books and so on. I'll talk about that in a while. And of course, uh, reiterating my uh, uh, my my earlier point that the question you will have to understand the question. And what I will do is I will kind of uh, maybe take you through a couple of questions to help you understand uh, what I mean by that. Okay, so so let's let's kind of uh, hold that for now. Okay, so what resources to use? Uh, again, there are books available. I'll talk about that. There are reference materials. Um, and I'll talk about that as well. Uh, then you sh I would, rec I would uh, maybe you will have your practice tests, some study notes. Okay, so I'll, I'll, talk, I'll kind of uh, take you through this in a while. And this is uh, the, uh, uh, so you need to probably have study notes uh, and uh, use, so, so have your own study notes. Uh, do practice tests, as I mentioned earlier on. So use the practice test to verify your knowledge, not, not really to study from it. And this is something called a mind map. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. And I, I'm a, I personally a very big fan of a mind map. And uh, so a mind map you can create very quickly like this, and you can collapse it. It's a very interesting way to study. And a lot of people uh, like this way. It's a very concise way of studying. Uh, all, all of these points goes in here. and. And, and kind of, uh, uh, you know, they use this mind map as a, to, as a as a study note, so they can go through this and understand. Okay, what is this? And if they know that, uh, move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, I will highly suggest and recommend that you consider using a mind map. Uh, and uh, well, if you're not comfortable, then certainly you can go with your, uh, you know, the the text based uh, study notes as well. Uh, that's not a problem. So let me quickly, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, let me quickly talk about a couple of things. So first question I want to ask you, any idea how many uh, CSSPs uh, in the world today, or let's say in India, let's focus on in India. You can use the chat window. I think I'm able to see the chat window. Okay. 20,000 in India. 20,000 in India, okay, yeah, that's that's a good number. Uh, you can use a chat window if you want. 2,500 says Sandeep, uh, okay, so that's way beyond the, way below 20,000. Anybody else? Uh, let's have some fun. I mean, just a guessing work, I suppose. You can use a chat window. 10,000 says Sarat, okay. Anywhere between 10,000 to 15,000. I would, I would hope so, you know, uh, 3,000 says surrender, okay. Um, wonderful. I would hope so, like, you know, at least we should have at least 10,000. I mean, I, India is supposed to be the, 
the brain, I guess, uh, of the world. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this. This is the site. It says uh, the members count. It's there on the ISISCO website. Um, and you can see these are the numbers here. Uh, Australia has about 2,500. Uh, and so on, go down. China has about 2,500. Canada has about 5,600. And uh, Germany has about 2,200. India has about 2,300. That's it. Okay. So, yes, it's way beyond 20,000 or 15,000. And this is the only number that we have as of today. And, um, and I must tell you, it's rapidly growing in the last uh, couple of years. And it's, it's been growing. And, and I, I guess also that's also do, to do with the kind of uh, people so, uh, people who focused on getting this exam. So when when we started off, it was I think much less. It was in the early one thousand or, or so. So rapidly increasing, um, but it's way beyond the demand. I must tell you. And when I say this demand is because today, if I look at any job portal, then I say for security job, there is usually a uh, CISSP or okay, maybe or they may say have a you know. CISM or a CISA or whatever, whatever, but usually uh, CISSP is the one people are looking for. And unfortunately, this is the number that we have. Uh, it's, it's way less than what I, I think everybody expected or everybody hopes to be. Um, but having said that, uh, there's a huge increase in the last, uh, I think, at least three, four years. Uh, uh, and and uh, and I guess you guys will be the next uh, to be part of this number, I suppose, right? So there's a lot more, I think, focus, a uh, lot more demand for uh, CSSP, and this number has been growing gradually, but uh, still, it's still very less. And and uh, so the point here is that if you become a CISSP certified, then you are certainly going to be in that elite uh, group where, where you'll be in very, very high demand, okay? Because there is not enough uh, CSSP, CSSP in the world today. And if you look at the world, I mean, the, the highest is from uh, the US, 87,000. Uh, maybe second is UK, about 7,200. That's a huge difference anyways there. And the total is about 136. Okay, so uh, that's just not too many, I suppose. But having said that, uh, this has been going rapidly, uh, and, uh, and this is good news for everybody. Okay, so sixth thing I want to talk about is the reference material, um, and the kind of CSSP has provided this. Uh, uh, sorry, IC Square, Square has provided this list here, and uh, the kind of this, this is there on the website itself. Okay, so you can figure this out. So uh, as I was saying, there is no single uh, material or book that you should probably uh, follow. They have mentioned their own official book, which is. Uh, Fairly good book, uh, and there are other books as well. So there are reference, all of reference books, uh, and if you can get hold of these books, will be really good. Um, they also have reference to ISIS, ISO, uh, you know, standards here. Um, there are books here, and there are these missed documents. Now, many of these books are paid, right? For for example, these books are paid. NIST, uh, ISO documents are also usually paid documents. Uh, the NIST is absolutely free of cost, and there are they are really great. I must tell you, they are really good materials, and you must you must uh, use these materials at least the NIST books, uh, NIST documents rather for the preparation. Uh, there are a lot of these books around here. Uh, so the, there's an entire list of the uh, you know books that I've suggested. These are all recommendations, okay, and uh, you do not have to read all of them. If you can, fantastic. Okay, so go over this. Uh, the entire list is here, uh, but certainly you must uh, you should read the list because they are absolutely free of cost and 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 most of the uh, uh, you know most most of the, uh, the 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 concepts that they usually follow books and exams they usually follow the NIST uh, recommendation the NIST the NIST standards or frameworks. So that's. Uh, uh, the NIST uh, the reference materials. Uh, there's a lot so. So I'll talk about this later on, uh, you know, in, during the course as well. And the uh, book, uh, the books, uh, there are, uh, there was a change, as I mentioned, in 2018. So there are a couple of books which are, um, first one is the CISSP Official Study Guide. 
Uh, I think this is a very good book. Um, the other one is uh, this all-in-one, Sean Harris, Fernando Miami. Uh, this is also considered to be a really good book. And uh, this is their, uh, uh, the official guide, which was mentioned there in that particular references. This is also a decent book. I wouldn't say this is uh, the best out there, but it's a decent reference material. And I guess that's the only one. There's one more, which is like a dummies book, which is uh, CSS with dummies, which is a decent one. So, so my recommendation is have either uh, this Sean Harris or uh, this uh, Cybex book as your primary book. Okay, so have one primary reference book. When I say primary, which means you will be reading from end to end. And as I mentioned, you must have more references material. So you can you buy both of them and use one as one as, as primary, you use the other as references. Um, and uh, many people do that. Okay, so or maybe get everything that you can get hold of, but one as primary and the other reference. And you should re use references, uh, maybe just to understand some concepts which are better explained in that particular book. And there are some uh, practice tests that which you can use later on as a way to verify and test your knowledge, but not as a way to study. Just assume with that. Um, yeah, so that's those are the books. Again, uh, just to give you a sense of it, we can talk about it uh, later on more in detail. And uh, one more, uh, this is the uh, X Mind, which I personally like. This is for your mind map that I talked about earlier on. They have this uh, free version and uh, it has a limited uh, features but uh, works really well. So you could probably use this as well, okay? Um, so let me, okay, so I think we still have some time. Uh, I quickly want to take you through some, uh, uh, some uh, exam questions. So I hope you're able to see my screen still. And uh, what I want to do is, uh, is I will put on the question here and I want you to put in your answer on the chat window. Would that be nice? So let's, let's look at this question. It says, Alice works for an American company that conducts business with customers in the European Union. What must she do if she's responsible for collecting PII for those customers? Okay, so put in your answer in the chat window, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, whatever. And uh, let me see. If you don't know, you can say, I don't know this thing. That's absolutely okay. I want to understand uh, where you are and your, your thinking process so that I can, I can help you, uh, uh, you know, with the preparation. Okay, I, I guess people are responding. Okay, I can see. Yeah, the options here. Okay, fair enough. So encrypt the data at all times, classify and label the data as per HIPAA guidelines, comply with the EU GDPR requirements, or use a DLP solution to prevent any data breach, because that is important. So what do we have as answers? I think a lot of you are saying C, some of you are saying B as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, five more seconds, and then we look at the answer. Okay, so I think most of you are correct. F fantastic. So, you, which means you are familiar with the GDPR uh, requirements, right? So, again, that's something that you have to study from the exam. This is in the 2018 update, the, the GDPR, uh, which, this is an interesting question, and I want to quickly help you uh, take it to this. So, which of the following best describes data quality principles? Let's see. Now, let me kind of... Uh, help you with this let's not waste time okay so uh, these kind of questions um, uh, what you need to use is a technique called elimination uh, technique uh, let's look at option d and option d uh, if you can tell me whether this is uh, 
this option is correct or incorrect and if 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 so why okay why do you think it's correct why do you think it's incorrect option d let's let's do uh, that you know that in that manner So option D, uh, correct or incorrect sentence. Read through, read through the sentence and you'll figure it out whether this is correct or incorrect and uh, tell me why. Option D is wrong because it is talking about data uh, compromise. Fantastic. Yes, option D is wrong because it says compromise of data. That certainly cannot be a, a, a data quality principle. So yeah, so just forget that. So let's strike out D, eliminate it. Right. Let's go to option A. Um, manipulation is not that the right one. Mm -hmm. But everywhere there is manipulation. You need to manipulate data. Manipulation so means to use the data. So data collection. Uh, deleting, the, deleting is something which is not really a, 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 a data quality principle, certainly. So A is also out, right? So now this is what happens in the CISSP. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. In the sense, what happens is that you'll easily figure out out of the four options that two are not correct at all. And you will be left with two options, which seems very similar and 50-50. Uh, that's all. Sometimes, sometimes that's a 50-50, and you might have to uh, think very carefully and then select the correct answer. So now, also in this one, uh, you have B and C. So between B and C, which one do you think is the correct answer? Use the chat window for this. I think this this is now easy. You just have to select one of them. So use the chat window. I'll put it in the chat window between uh, B and C and uh, be on mute, guys, because there's some background news, background noise. Okay. So write down the question number because uh, when you just write A, B, C, I, I wouldn't know which question number you're answering for. Okay, so uh, this one, if you see the B, uh, there is an additional uh, identification which is. Uh, not there in the option C. Now you have to think. Okay, is identification? Uh, do you think it's a good quality principle to identify your data? And um, you know, so again, if you're not too sure, um, you can think again. But I, I but but uh, you can see that all the other options have identification here. The A, B, and D, all of them identification. So it seems like identification is an important option to have. Okay, option, uh, important thing to have. So, option B in that case is the correct answer. All right. So, option B is I don't know how many selected that. If you did select, that's that's the correct one. Now, the point here is that option uh, uh, point here is that this kind of questions you did not have to know what the other I mean the entire thing. I mean you, you did not have to memorize all of those things, but you were still able to answer these questions. Okay, so even if you did not know this uh, this, this concept, you are still able to answer this question, and that sometimes happens in the exam. So you might come across an, and and this looks very difficult. I mean, on the face of it, but then you break it up like this, and and you realize that hey, this is easy, and you didn't even have to know the actual <laughs> the actual uh, what is it about. You didn't. So it says a lot of things. Anyway, so that's uh, one uh, technique that you'll use. And so there's another one. So there are very things that you will have to uh, memorize. Okay. So, and also know the reason why as well. Uh, so here's a question. You're designing a server room. What is the ideal percentage of humidity required to prevent uh, damage to electronic uh, equipment? So sometimes uh, you'll have to uh, you know, know these things. So numbers. Uh, let's see how many of you answer this correctly. If you don't know, like I said, uh, let's write, I don't know. Uh, write down the question number, please. I, I still don't see question number, Harish. Okay. 
Okay, so five more seconds. Now, I'm sorry I'm giving you very little time because I think you're running out of time as well. So, uh, 40 to 60 percent uh, is should be the correct answer. Right? That's something that you'll have to, like I said, you'll have to uh, remember this. And there will be, so in the exam, uh, when you're preparing for the exam, there will be a lot of things that you'll have to uh, uh, understand and few things which you'll actually have to really uh, remember it or, or kind of memorize it. But again, uh, uh, underst uh, remembering it with a uh, kind of, un with some understanding. So, ha for example, here 40 to 60 percent, why? No, because uh, you need, if it's too, uh, if the humidity is too high, then there is uh, corrosion. If it's too less, then there is static electricity. So you need to understand those stuff. Okay. So anyway, so if you know, if you don't know this, that's fine. Then that's something which we we'll study. Okay, this is another interesting one. And I want you to kind of, uh, if you know it's excellent, if you don't know it, I'll, uh, then that's fine. Uh, so which of the following biometric system would be considered the most accurate? Now, I want you to write down the reason why. Okay, so question number four, you can say A, B, C, D, whatever it is, and you can tell me, okay, this is the reason why uh, this is the correct answer. Okay, so the why is important. I'm not interested in the what. I'm not interested. I'm just in the right answer. I'm interested in the right reason. Okay, so like I said, please, I, I'm looking for the reason. So if you don't know the reason, that's you can say I don't know. Uh, but I'm not interested in the right answer. I'm interest, interested in the right reason. <clears throat> okay, uh, five more seconds. Okay, so I, I can see uh, uh, some of you have answered it. Uh, so I can see some of you are correct uh, with the answer, uh, but but I don't see anybody uh, with the correct reasoning, and that's what is important from the examination point of view. And I keep saying that um, the, the the it's it's a very conceptual exam, and you, and you need to understand the reason why. So. When you are solving questions like this, or when you even have your practice test, so when you do a practice test, uh, please understand those questions will never be asked in the exam. Even this question will not be asked in the exam. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why you know you don't start, kind of mug this up. So what will be asked is the concept. So you need to understand why this answer was correct or why this, why this was incorrect. So while uh, you may have answered it correctly, but uh, but but the next time if they change the question a little bit, uh, and and you may not be able to answer it correctly because if you haven't understood the concept, then you're certainly gonna not answer it correctly. Now in this case, if some of you are saying okay, retina scan is probably the most accurate, or fingerprint is more accurate, or and blah blah blah. Uh, no, that's not the reason why uh, the answer is uh, correct. But so let's understand the answer. Correct answer is option. A is still in this one. Okay, so it's not because of a, just a retina scan is very, you know, uh, unique and things like that. The only reason why this answer is correct is because there's this value called CER, a crossover error rate. Now, again, if you have studied this, well and good. If you haven't, then that's fine. Uh, but CER value being the lowest is the only reason why this answer is correct. Okay, so let me explain. So tomorrow I can have uh, another question saying fingerprint CR value of 2, retina scan CR value of 3. Which one is more accurate? It has to be fingerprint because the CR value is, is, is lesser than. Okay, so 
uh, the, the only reason why this answer is correct is the CR value. So slow the CR value, the more accurate the system is, and that is the concept that you need to understand. Okay, and they will ask this concept in different forms. Okay, so I hope you're getting a sense of it. A uh, couple more questions. Uh, this is another one, which is uh, uh, okay. So this is another one, which uh, I mentioned about understanding the question. Okay, this is one of those questions which you actually need to understand uh, to be able to answer this question. Okay, so take your time, ten seconds. <laughs> understand the question what, what does it try to ask okay question number five so which process determines that the entity is trusted for a given purpose so is it authorization, authentication, identification, or accounting? Okay, five more seconds. And this is not a very difficult ex a question. Uh, it's just that the it's just that you need to understand the question. Okay, so all right, all right. So. Uh, so this was uh, trying to ask, okay, which process determines that the entity, a person, is trusted for a given purpose? Can you be trusted to update the customer data? Can it be trusted to make this payment? All right, so which process determines that? So that is the authorization process. Okay, so the entity, a trust is only about the, uh, the, the authorization process. Okay, so... I, I hope that you understood this. So, uh, so I will talk. We can talk. I will, this is a concept again, which probably we'll have to study in the in the course. But identifying authentic identification, authentication, and then authorization. There are certain differences between the three uh, the three of them, and certainly accounting as well. So, authorization is the part where you kind of verify if the person has that authority of to do a certain task. And the person has that uh, privileges and the of course, that comes with the trust. Can that person be trusted to to to, to make those uh, uh, to make those changes or, or take those actions? Okay, so that's question number five. As I mentioned, a little tricky one. I think most of you uh, answered it incorrectly. Uh, this is purely again a neat kind of uh, uh, knowing the answer. Bob has written an application in Python. He's considering moving from a self-hosted Python environment to one where Bob will run the application. In servers managed by the cloud provider, what type of cloud solution is Bob considering? Like a very uh, conceptual concept. I mean, this shouldn't be a very difficult one. One of the easier questions to answer. Is a SaaS pass application as a service and infrastructure as a service. Okay, so five more seconds. Okay, write on the question level, please. Okay, so this you need to know what what uh, what are these uh, what are SAS or PaaS or AS or IAS? What what do they provide? So. Uh, so in this, of course, uh, there is no such thing as uh, application as a service. That's just a made up word, and you you come across those made up words on the exam saying, okay, you know, this is not something that it should be there. And uh, and of course, there are these SAS, PaaS, and IaaS. This is typically a PaaS uh, uh, concept. Again, uh, you you need to understand the PaaS. If you, I know some of you answered it incorrectly, you need to understand. Hey, what's the difference between SAS, PaaS, IaaS? And how can I use it? So it's just just not about understanding what a pass is, but in which situation will I use that? You know, so or uh, which situation will I use the SAS? So uh, application of that concept is important. And this particular uh, uh, question kind of uh, highlights that. Okay, I will need to use one of this platform given this scenario. Okay, so you need to understand 
have an understanding of that environment. So the, the, they, uh, there could be another, uh, you know, uh, scenario tomorrow. Uh, and you should, again, similarly be able to kind of understand where is it applicable. So at a conceptual level, you need to understand. Uh, there's, I think, one more question. And this is, uh, again, um, a typical question where it says, cryptography provides all of the following except as a keyword that I mentioned earlier on, you need to kind of read the questions carefully. Sometimes you miss out on these keywords saying, except which of these uh, is, is uh, the answer. So you need to find the odd one out here. Okay, so sometimes you'll come across these words. Again, if you're not familiar, this cryptography is certainly a, you know, a big topic. If you don't know, you can say, I'm not sure. If you want to guess, be my guest. Uh, but it's certainly, a, you need to know this stuff. Okay, why? Uh, is this uh, anyway? So we'll, we'll come to that. Uh, okay, so five more seconds. So, it, in uh, cryptography, you use a uh, concept called hashing. Uh, that's typically for the concept of integrity, okay? And then you have um, uh, all of these uh, keys, symmetric, asymmetric, and uh, uh, we typically use uh, the, uh, in the asymmetric, we use the, the private key of the sender that will help us establish two things. One is the authenticity of that, uh, that person and the